Today is Tuesday, April the 6th. I am your host, Casey Phoenix, and this is my daily thought. Okay. <laughs> Where to start? This is so strange because when I was planning this, I was going in one direction, and then as I started preparing, it started going in a totally different direction, which is crazy. So, wow. You know what? Before I go any further, KIRWKC.com, main podcasting platform. This podcast is carried on Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Bullhorn, Overcast, and several other podcasting platforms. Listen to whatever platform works best for you. By the way, shout out to Turkey, the country of Turkey. I now have listeners in Turkey. Go figure. So shout out to Turkey. Um, K-I-R-W-K-C on all the social media platforms. Feel free to subscribe and like and follow and all that other stuff. I told you I'm not that active on social media, but I, I still do things from time to time. And I always post my stuff on social media. And shout out to to the Daily Motion community, because I've noticed that people have been watching my videos on Daily Motion. So shout out to them. If you're watching this on Daily Motion or on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you will know when I upload new videos. And don't forget to like, because that always helps out the channel. And don't forget to share, because sharing is caring. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. I had titled this, We All Want Someone Who Gets Us. I'm trying to get comfortable in my chair for those who are listening to the podcast. Also, okay, um, I, I had to look for my water for a second. Um, when I was, when I came up with that, when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about a romantic relationship. And I know that when I discuss things sometimes, especially with tarot card readings, which, by the way, that's the other thing I meant to tell you, uh, too. The tarot card energy readings, I do not know when or how I will start the mid-month April readings for those who listen to my readings on this channel. Because I'm energy-wise, I'm kind of in limbo right now. I'm, I'm getting things done, obviously, spring cleaning. It's just that I have a lot of things on my mind and a lot of things on my plate. I think, don't hold me to this, I think that I will do three readings Saturday and maybe, or maybe I'll start on Friday. I'm not even sure. Definitely three would be the minimum on Saturday. If I'm really feeling it, I might do more or I could just start this Saturday is the hold on. This Saturday is the 10th. You know what? Let's do this. I'm going to do a movie recommendation this Saturday is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a movie recommendation this Saturday because I watched the movie last night that I absolutely love. It's an old movie and I absolutely love it. So I'm going to do that for a movie recommendation <laughs> this Saturday. And going into next week, I will probably start doing the mid-month energy readings little by little. I'll do my, my drawing um, sometime beginning next week or either Friday of this week, but probably beginning next week, I'll do the drawing of the order of the signs that I will do the readings for. And then we can sort of take it from there and do that. Because as we go into next week, I can have it wrapped up by maybe the 17th and do it that way. That might be the goal. And work with it like that on the energy readings, on the tarot card readings. So for those who listen to tarot card readings, I think that's it. I'm going to do a movie recommendation this Saturday. And then starting next week, I'll start working into 
doing the actual readings little by little instead of trying to record them all at once or record six at once or do this or do that. So I think that's what we're going to do for next week. Yeah. Now, back to my daily thought. So when I was doing this, when I was talking about we all want someone who gets this, I was talking about it from a romantic point of view. But then as I was setting everything up to record, I was like, you know what? We all, not even on a romantic level, on a platonic relationship level, like you have that best friend where I don't know if you've ever had this where you've clicked with someone so well that you finish each other's sentences or one knows what the other will say before they say it. Having that type of connection with friendship or with family, because not everyone gets everyone when it comes to family. There are people who they they just don't click. The crazy thing is, and this is true, a true story. When I was growing up, my brother, my my middle brother, he he's not. I think I told everybody the story behind that. If not short version, we found out we had another brother. So my oldest brother became my middle brother because obviously the other brother was older than him. So, <laughs> but yeah, my brother older than me, the middle brother <laughs> now, we, let, okay, let me add a caveat to all of this because I need to make it clear. I love my brother, even though he, my brother and my mother, everyone says that my mother and I have a lot of similarities, but I honestly think my brother and my mother have more similarities because those two swear that I am just not caring, that I don't care about them. <laughs> and that is not the case. They just run me low sometimes. However, I still love them very dearly. When I was growing up, I didn't click with my brother, my middle brother. The, the oldest brother didn't exist then. I didn't click with my middle brother growing up. It's like we were cool. He would take me to school and things like that. He taught me how to ride a bike and all of that stuff. But we, it's not like the brotherly, brotherly relationship. And it might be because of the age difference. Because my brother and I are six years apart. And I think my mother even said once, if she had it to do all over again, she would have had us cl like closer together. Which I'm glad that she didn't do that. Because if she would have went that route, then I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> so you would have got somebody else. That's a few years older than me, possibly not doing this, but these are minor details. So we didn't, we weren't close, close like some brothers are. However, my mother's sister, her eldest son, which him and my brother are a year apart, him and I clicked very well, which honestly, in his youngest brother, they didn't really click, but the youngest brother clicked with my brother. Now, me, I think it has something to do with astrology because my brother is a Sagittarius. I'm a Cancer. My cousin, who I'm talking about that I clicked with as I was growing up, is a Capricorn. His younger brother is a Gemini. Sagittarius and Gemini usually get along very well, too. And also, relationship-wise, even romantic relationships, they do pretty well together, too. And also Capricorn and Cancer, even though the signs are polar opposites, Capricorns and, Capricorns and Cancers usually get along pretty well. And it's usually a, a solid relationship. Either they love each other or they hate each other. But if they get along, they get along. OK. The point of that story is, is that sometimes you're in your family and some of your relatives, whether it's your mother, whether it's your father, whether it's your brother, whether it's your sister, whether it's your cousin, whether it's your aunt, uncle, grandmother, grandfather, whatever. They just don't get you. But you might have, you know, your third cousin once removed, 
which I don't even know where the hell they got that from. My mother said that to me one time. Tell me, oh, that's your such and such cousin once removed. I'm like, how did they get removed? Whatever. But you have your third cousin once removed that they get you, but your you may have your own mother who doesn't even get you. And in work, in work life, because like I said, these were the things that were coming to me as I was doing this. In work life, you want people who get your personality, people who understand you, people, people who know how you tick and, and can go with the flow of that instead of attempting to change you to something that you're not. Or considering your, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say eccentricities because that can have a negative connotation to it. Uh, Your characteristics, certain characteristics that you have, personality traits that you may have, considering that to be a flaw when really it's just your personality. And if you get someone, you don't necessarily look at a personality trait as a flaw. Now, are we flawed individuals? Yes, we're all men. We're even though we all come from something greater. And that is within all of us. We are still flesh and bone because we are flesh and bone. We are naturally flawed. However, Throughout the flaws and all, you still want someone who gets you. And for that person who gets you, if there are any flaws, you don't want that person to come from a place of judgment. You want them to come from a place of, oh, that's their personality. Now, of course, feedback is a gift. If someone wants to offer feedback on certain personality traits, go for it. Because You're telling someone something that is on your mind, is on your spirit. You need to go ahead and say it. And you're being honest with them. And and I'll never knock anyone for being honest. I might be irritated for a second, depending on what it is. But I'll never knock anyone for being honest. Honesty goes a very long way with me. That's just me personally. I don't know about anybody else, but that's just me. So they can be honest with you. You can be honest with them. and Everything is good. And the with my daily thought, this is where I'm saying sometimes it can be difficult to find those genuine relationships where people where people get you where people see who you are and they don't run for the hills. <laughs> or, you know, they're not like, oh my God. It's, it's really, really crazy when it comes to stuff like that. So, <laughs> I will say that I think that's kind of what we all want is someone who just gets us on all levels. Like I said, at first when I was doing this, I was thinking about romance. And then as I was going into it, I'm like, you know what? People want their relatives to get them too and and quit misunderstanding them. And they would like to build a relationship with certain people have a better relationship with certain people in their lives. But especially on the romance level, that's what you want. I honestly believe that one of the reasons that it can be difficult, I'm looking at an email right now. Just bear with me for those who are listening to the podcast. And I'm just like, okay, wait, what? (laughs) This is probably not going to fly. But I digress. So when it comes to relationships, I think 
that people feel like people aren't always fully forthcoming because the person they're in a relationship with, they may feel like that person doesn't get them. If they felt like that person got them, like that person understood how they work, and don't get me wrong, part of a relationship is figuring out how someone works. Just like if you're dating someone, you're you're understanding how they, they work, where you may see after spending a couple of nights with them, they're not a morning person, is what you may see. And... I would say that that is one thing of your learning as you go. However, comma, there are other situations when you're in a relationship with someone and it seems like no matter how much information you learn about the person, you still just don't get them. No matter how much information you learn, you still just don't get them. Or no matter how much information they learn about you, they still, they still just don't get you. They don't fully know what makes you tick. They don't know what makes your face light up. They don't know what's the quickest thing to make you angry. They don't know um, I'm just thinking of, of things in a relationship here. They, they don't know the quickest way to get your attention. And that's what I'm talking about, where you want someone, we all want someone who gets us. And sometimes when we meet someone, it can be right out the gate. It can be right out the gate. Where you just get each other. You just click, which is why sometimes people get married when really they shouldn't get married. They just happen to have a good soul connection. Just because someone has a soul connection doesn't mean that they should get married. It just means they have a good soul connection. Not all people who have a good soul connection make good spouses. It doesn't just because you have a good connection, soul connection with someone doesn't guarantee that they will be a good husband or a good wife. That's not guaranteed because you can have a good soul connection with someone. You can really understand someone, but then they can have certain tendencies that might throw a wrench in a relationship. So keep that in mind, too. However, comma. When in a relationship, there is nothing better than being in love with someone who gets you. There there just isn't. There isn't anything better than being in love with someone who gets you. And also, if you get them, even better. And that's what I think we want. And like I said, this isn't limited to just romance. It's always nice to have a relative in the family where you, they just get you. They click with you. I I would say that my mother's sister, my auntie, out of all of my aunties, that's the auntie that I click with the most out of all my aunties. And that that's just what it is. It's just like she gets me for the most part. She doesn't know everything about me, but she understands me better than some of my other relatives. So, yeah, when it comes to work, clearly there are some people who get me who understand my personality versus some other people who don't get me. No matter 
how much information's out, no matter how much I have a conversation or how many conversations I have with an individual, they just don't get me. And let me add this in into the mix too, before I close this out. It is not anyone's responsibility, especially when it comes to work, to fully understand the ins and outs of someone's personality. It just isn't. You know, you you take what you can, you do what you can, and you you keep it moving. In family, it's, it's not a given. It's not a requirement for family to get you, to understand you. Would it make your family life easier? Yeah, probably would if everyone got everyone and understood everyone. But they'll still be your family regardless. Just like if whether people get you or not at your job, they will still be your, your co-worker or workers regardless. When it comes to a relationship, romantic relationship, I probably say that one holds more importance because with the job, even if people get you or you get them or don't, if you're still going to work the job, you're still going to work the job. There is something that you're receiving from that job, whether it be money, whether it be stability, whether it be whatever. When it comes to family, blood ties. You, you're not going to outrun blood ties. You just... You can't do it. Your cousin will still be your cousin. Your uncle will still be your uncle. Your aunt will still be your aunt. Your mother will still be your mother. Father will still be your father. So on and so forth. That's a given. Whether you have a meaningful relationship, that can be a different discussion. But when it comes to a romantic relationship, I feel like those are the relationships that you have the most freedom to leave, to walk. Because some people might stay married for stability, might, depending on who and what the situation is. I feel this is more of, for those who are watching, I, I was reading an email. That's why I rolled my eyes. <laughs> Something. But yeah, I feel that um, it is more of a thing where it's just easier to go sometimes when you're dating someone or dealing with someone romantically versus it can be Difficult, it can be more difficult for someone to turn their back on family or to shut out family or with work. You can't just quit your job <laughs> just because people don't get you or you don't get them. But with romantic relationships, also with friendships, that can be you can walk out and leave on those as well. Easier too with friendships. If someone just isn't getting you and more than likely, if someone doesn't get you or they're not at the point where they get you, then. It's one of those things. Where. It. It more than likely won't develop into much of a friendship anyway. Unless it's unless it's one of those friendships where it's it's more of a surface friendship. And what I mean by surface friendship, I just mean you see each other around the way you say hello um, more for networking which don't live to network. I did it. I did a daily thought on that. You can check that out. I forgot which one. It was, but I believe the title of it was Stop Living to Network. Don't just make friends with people just to network. 
That's so, ugh. but whatever. If it's more of a surface level friendship, th that might survive. But if it's something where you're looking to have a meaningful friendship with someone over time, it, it, if they don't get you and you don't get them, more than likely the friendship isn't going to last that long. I don't see that happening. I don't see it happening. I don't need tarot cards for that. I do not see that happening. So that's just my little thought on, you know, we all want someone who gets us, especially in the romance department where we're dealing with people. And I can add to that, we all want to get somebody who we're dealing with too in the romance department. But overall, in life, we all want someone who gets us. Someone who knows how we tick. Are willing to make the effort to figure out how we tick. So yeah, that's my daily thought. That's all I have. K-I-R-W-K-C dot com. <laughs> Main podcasting platform. K-I-R-W-K-C on all the social media platforms. Thank you for all of the support. Until next time, be blessed.